the escalation is different. The way that this time the North Koreans appear determined to say something or sometimes do something uh, worse day by day is unusual. Also, the specific threats, mentions of nuclear strikes, the usually North Korean rhetoric is blood curdling but cast in fairly general terms. This time they're being much more specific. And thirdly, I think for the first time, the threats are being attributed directly to the Supreme Leader. We saw just a few days ago Kim Jong-un in conference with his generals with that astonishing map in, in, in the background with those implausible missile routes uh, from North Korea to the United States. Uh, you don't have to take that map seriously, but you do have to take seriously the fact that Kim Jong-un himself was prepared to appear in that photograph. And what is Kim Jong-un trying to achieve with all this? I think he's got broadly two sets of objectives. On the one hand, he wants to show annoyance and protest at things he dislikes. Secondly, uh, the uh, joint American-South Korean military exercises, which are currently underway, which are due to run until 30th of April. Uh, the North Koreans always protest against these. They happen every year. But this time, the Americans have deployed and declared that they've deployed uh, B-52s and B-2s. I think that's rather rattled the North Koreans. I think the message that Dennis Rodman, the basketball player, brought back from Pyongyang, a curious messenger if you like, but he brought back the clear message that Kim Jong-un wants to talk to President Obama. That is to say, North Korea wants respect. Uh, it wants America to talk to it as an equal. It almost certainly wants America to accept its status as a nuclear power. It passed a domestic law just a few days ago uh, claiming that status. And I strongly suspect it also wants a lot of American aid. Its economy is in a terrible state. So do you think, I mean, the United States are taking this threat seriously, they're moving their missile defence systems. Um, do you think the United States, South Korea, possibly even Europe, are facing a clear and present danger? Or do you think it's all about bringing other nations to the table and talking and discussions? Well, both. Uh, I think it's about bringing other nations, about bringing America to the table in discussions. I don't think that Kim Jong-un is actively looking for a war. He knows very well, or I hope he knows very well, that if he starts one, he's going to lose it. The risk isn't that Kim Jong-un starts a war on purpose. The risk is that he starts a war by accident, by continuing with this escalation, and by, at some point, thinking he can get away with something that he can't. Remember that in 2010, North Korea sank a South Korean corvette and also shelled a South Korean island. Now, the South Koreans, as recently as yesterday, made very clear that if this happens again, they are not going to stand around and be shot at. They are going to retaliate. And the day before yesterday, Secretary of State Kerry made equally clear that the United States is going to stand by its South Korean ally. So the, the writing is on the wall. If North Korea tries this again, there will be retaliation and almost certainly, therefore, uh, North Korean counter-retaliation and you're on a, a slope downwards. But we can't be sure that Kim Jong-un really understands this. There's the risk that he miscalculates and triggers a war by accident. Also, uh, I understand completely why the United States showed him the B-52s and the B-2s. They're trying to wall off uh, the avenue of provocation, make clear to him that he is not going to get anywhere by doing that kind of thing again. But there's always the risk that a senior North Korean general sees these blips on the radar screen and believes that this is the long-awaited imperialist invasion and fires those missiles. It might go wrong from that point of view too.